I got a Polynesian and chips with garlic butter. Pitiful poultry. Yeah, it's because it's a nice thing in there. I got uh, three chicken creoles. So, um, why? Uh, they're, they're really good, very tasty. So, uh, you yeah, haven't been getting them here for years. Two king creoles and a garlic cheese and chips. And why? Because that's what everyone gets. I got um, the chicken burger and chips. I was here 20 years ago, but it's amazing what's inside there. They have such a fantastic recipe for everything. It's just different really, the menu. It even looks different inside and stuff. <laughs> best place best to come one. in Douglas right. by far. Yeah. We're all of our students, so we come every we come every like one or two weeks, I'd say. For the food you get, the price yeah. the price yeah. is class. Really. Yeah. There's nowhere else you can go. For that. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. It's the only place in Cork I know where I can get a Creole. Um, so that, that's the main reason. So I come all the way over from Glenmire to get these. Okay, uh, I'm Wes Crawford and of the Casey and Son and Sons, I'm the son. So I'm the middle generation of it. My father set this up in 1958 uh, along with my mother um, when Douglas was quite a different place. This was the last bus stop on the number seven bus route. Very quiet little village. But it was a choice between emigration and opening up a business here, so they decided to take a chance. And they struggled, I suppose, as, as the, there wasn't the population there, there wasn't the money there. Uh, very lean times. The, the 40 days leading up to Easter in Lent, people seriously did stop any form of pleasure, including eating very often. And we would wait for Patrick's Day, Piper's, the Mary's to open up and I would be sent out as a little boy across the road, my bag of chips, subliminal advertising to the crowds over there, uh, wander around and um, then everything was shut down again more or less until Easter. Obviously that's changed as the, as the years went on. Uh, my father ran it till his untimely death about 1970 so I was just about to leave school at that stage as you do in, in July, he died in the October. So I basically stepped in and took over at that point. But then I was fortunate enough to have Zach and Josh and Ben, and it's, um, it functions remarkably well. Um, you can't put your finger on why it does, but it just does. Mm, I remember coming in from a very young age, actually, um, kind of resenting it at the time. I mean, usually during school holidays or something, you know, we'd, we'd get fooled in. I think I was getting paid like a pound an hour or something like that at the time. So it was a form of you got paid. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> it seemed like a lot actually when I was a kid. But looking back now, it seems like child labour. But um, when I was older, when you know, having left school, I kind of had ambitions to do other things with my life and tried out other things. But um, ultimately, I never got the same satisfaction from anything else. Yeah, I remember uh, coming as a kid after school on a Friday and it was not as busy back then but um, still you could see the way it was going and the, the, the direction it was taking and I never really envisioned myself working here and then you end up liking it and finding a way to like it and finding a way to make it work and it, it gets very very busy here um, the queues they go around the shop and down the street and they don't stop all night so it's it's all hands on deck there's there could be eight or nine staff members working here uh, at any time and then 
you just don't stop for a second. Uh, it's it's good atmosphere though. It's really enjoyable, uh, especially when there's music playing and there's um, the, the team is working well together and the queue is moving fast. It's it's actually the night the night goes really quickly. Mm, you kind of get into a bit of a zen mood, you know. With you just get into a rhythm and it flows very well. Like if you have a good team on and everybody's, you know, enjoying each other's company, it's uh, it can it can be very exciting just to feel that you're shifting so many people through and hopefully making them happy as well at the same time. We started off with about six items on the menu in 1958. It's grown a little bit. I, I gradually introduced other items. Um, the more I travelled, the more I saw what other people were eating. We flirted with pizzas about 20 years ago and I was delighted with them, thought it was great. But it just killed our queue dead because they were just too slow. We just couldn't produce for the queue. Um, the pita breads came in through some ideas that I'd been having and then travelled to Crete and saw some guy there in a tiny place in Crete doing the most amazing bit of breads which he was putting chips and things in on top of everything else and I thought wow what a great idea I could do that in a simpler form for mass consumption so the, the Creole chicken which is our big 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 seller now that came to me um, in a restaurant in London where I was eating with some friends had it in a different form there I thought this is brilliant combined that with what I'd learned in Crete from watching the other guy and came up with what we now have, the King Creole. So wherever you are, Mr. Cretian Cook, thank you very much. It was a great idea. We've always tried to do things from scratch, partially because even though it means more work, you, you can make your profit at that end of things. You don't have to charge a lot for what you're doing because you're adding the value early on in the food chain. Yeah, we start quite early here. Like, I think people are sometimes surprised at how early we, we come in. Like A lot of the delivery men are delighted by it because they can get their deliveries done quite early in the day. But Zach will be in at seven, I'll, I'll come in at quarter past seven. Dad will be in at about half past seven. And it's you know working very hard up until well into the afternoon, making various products and sauces and things like that. The way we can serve queue so fast is because uh, we we prep everything up during the day, so it's 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 ready just to finally sort of assemble together, and and get out as quick as possible. For instance, our the Kansas City um, barbecue pork that we do is a massive long process involved in in that. We get the the pork bellies in, and then we rub them with our own blend of of spices, and then they they marinate in that overnight, and then the next day. We, um, we cook them in, we sort of steam them for a long time, for mm. about three, three hours, is it? Yeah, it's three hours. And, and then once they cool down, it's sliced up and added to our own barbecue sauce. And that product then is used at night time to put into a pig bread. So there's a, there's, there's a few days work almost going into the, the product in your hand. It's a, it's a lot of love and attention that we pay to all of our ingredients, really. Mm. What we cook is what we would eat at home. Um, so it's, it's good ingredients, it's, it's the, the sort of cooking techniques that we'd use. So we like to think that even though our industry's got a very bad image, that what we're selling isn't actually unhealthy. Obviously, nothing that you eat seven nights a week is going to be good for you. But for the people that come in here a couple of times a week and eat, it's exactly the same level of nourishment. We've, we've got customers coming in here for the last 30, 40 years. They still look reasonably healthy. I don't think we're killing anybody. We think it should be possible to do decent food at a decent price. We would like people to be able to eat here several times rather than think this is a big, big expensive treat. That isn't what chips should be. I mean, cheapest chips is a, a slogan for, for a particular reason. And I suppose our cues are testimony to the fact that people believe it. Every year we seem to get that little bit busier and following last year's disastrous floods where the shop got wiped out and we were shut for a month it was pretty obvious that people missed us um, there was the most incredible response from the the scattered hordes of our ex-customers as much as the people here um, one of my ex-staff members a friend of mine is now living in Cape Cod 
walked into her little grocery store in Cape Cod a few days after the flood and there was two people behind the counter discussing that Casey's was closed because it was flooded out and they were two Cork girls that were now over there. So I think that fed into the local population and people thought, oh, if they like it that much, we've got it on our doorstep, we must make use of it. And uh, bless their hearts, they have done. It's great. It's, it's, it's been a great business to run as a, as a family person. When they were young, I worked at night here, which meant I was off during the day mostly, which meant I had time to pick them up from school. I could work that sort of schedule and it was, it was really good. Now, to a certain extent, Zach can do the same thing. He's got two kids. That's going to throw our sign, actually. He's had the first daughter in the Crawford family for 100 years. So what's going to happen when she joins? We'll have to really change our sign around. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the, the next generation, um, I'll, I'll leave it up to them, really, if they want to come on. But uh, we'll have to get a bigger sign if they do. So, and son and sons and daughter. It doesn't flow as well either, does it? But yeah, they, they, they both show an interest in this place. And obviously, I'd love to see them working here but one day. But their choice, I suppose. There is nothing like it anywhere, I don't think. Can you tr we, we've travelled a fair bit and you, because we've drawn from so many different influences, you know, we're not a fish and chip shop, we're, we're not a burger restaurant, we're, you know, we, we've got a lot of different influences and I think that's, that's what pe keeps people coming back, is that um, there's, there's so much to choose from and there is nothing like it anywhere else. It, it works really well, the size of the building and the, the way that it's, it's uh, structured, so. We did expand six inches or something, didn't we? Is it <laughs> shorter? So there you go, slight expansion. Let's give the customer what he wants rather than what we just want to give them. So they come in, they want something different on their burger. We can do it and we can communicate to our staff behind the counter that this is what we want. And then usually the customer ends up being served it. If he doesn't get it, the next guy down the queue gets it by accident. Um, but that way, it's an, it's an adventure. <laughs> okay? Yeah. Right. That's great. So I'm gonna go Get a King Creole Gonna get myself down to Casey's and Sons Chicken, mayo, lettuce and a bun Oh